Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. And today I wanna to show you how you can make your YouTube videos look way more professional, turning it from this to this. Let's get to it. Now, before we get into today's tutorial on how to make your YouTube videos look way more professional, first, I want to go over and share with you the key lights that I'll be using. The main light that I usually use is actually from the Loom Cube Studio Panel Lighting Kit. This right here is a perfect two light setup for any YouTube or video content creator. I've used it on a client shoot, but mostly I use these for my YouTube videos. So if you like the lighting, these are the key lights that I I use personally. So first off, it has a uh, edge light technology. So it has 200 inward LED lights. So it keeps it soft and bright. Now your color temperature can go from 2700 K to 7500 Kelvin in the color temperature. So a lot of range and it's 2100 lux at a half a meter. It provides about 1800 lumens just to let you know of brightness all right and it's rated at a 96 plus cri rating then the dimensions they're about 10 and a half wide by seven and a half inches in height and only about one inch in depth so these are very slim could fit anywhere you want hang on any stand and because they weigh only about right over one and a half pounds at 700 grams, you can put these on any stand. I mean, these things are great. I love using them. Now, when you charge them up, they have an internal lithium ion battery internally. So therefore, if you don't wanna use the cord or DC power, you're good to go. And it runs 80 minutes of light at maximum brightness, which is really incredible. One of my favorite things is that it comes with a remote control. Uh, they do have barn doors that are included and the uh, battery life indicator LCD screen displays the minute battery life that automatically updates as your settings change. That's right. So as you adjust the power, you know how much battery life you have left. That is clutch. I love that. It's right on the back of the uh, of each of the lights. The great thing about this kit is that they come with two 70 inch lighting stands. That's very compact and portable. So it's very easy to use. They're made out of aluminum and they go from 18 inches to 70 inches. And with all that said, it actually comes with a carrying case. So you can put all these in one carrying case. So those are the details of the main lights that I use for my YouTube setup. Let's go over the entire setup, breaking it down from no lights to all of them. Let's get to it. Of course, I'm gonna leave a link in the description section for you to check out the Loom Cube two panel kit for yourself. Definitely, I would recommend if you're not really a pro at lighting, but you want good lighting, this lighting kit is perfect for you. Here we are in complete darkness and I'm gonna share with you each light as I add them in order to create my entire lighting for my YouTube videos. First, we're gonna start with the key light. So as you can see, I have one of the Loom Cube panels set right here, camera left in uh, from your direction. And that gives me great lighting. I'm only at 15%. I'm not sure if you can see it, but I'm only at 50% power. Gives me plenty of, um, of, of spread of light. It's very soft. And you can see here, I have some shadow obviously there, which I like personally. If you want, you can add another light here, the second light, the other panel, uh, for, for, for fill. But, uh, I didn't want to do that. Okay. So before we get to the next thing, let's talk about my camera settings. Okay. First is I have the, uh, Panasonic Lumix S5 as my camera. And then I have the Sigma DGDN 35 millimeter art lens. It's an F1.4 lens, but I have it at F2. That's how I shoot all my videos at F2. I have it on autofocus continuous with face eye detect on there. Okay. Now with that said, here are the actual settings of the camera. I have it at 150th of a second. And then I have an F2 and then ISO 320. Now the video setting I have is at MP4 shooting at 4K 420, 10 bit. Okay. So those are the settings I have for color. I chose Cine D. That's what I'm going with. I don't do vlog for videos and I definitely don't do standard. I think Cine D is the best of both worlds. That's the picture profile that I go with when I record my videos. Now, now that we got the camera settings out of the way, 
and then we have our key light right here. Now let's go ahead and add hair light. So I just use, I don't have another stand behind me because you would see it. So what I do is I actually clipped it right above me, right above out of frame on the bookshelf. The second panel I'm able to turn on from here using the remote. Okay, now I go to ahead and turn that on. And then th there you go. You can already see the difference. Also, a little bit of light spill is happening up top right there. And that gives me nice little, little bit of lighting, but most importantly, lighting here. Let me turn it off again. So you can see the difference right there. So there we go. We have a simple two light setup. We have uh, the key light right here, and then we have hair light or AKA edge lighting right up top here just to add some separation in the back. Now that we have everything set up, now we're going to use, uh, we're going to turn on what they call practicals. Practicals are just natural lights that would be in the frame that you're going to utilize, right? So lamps, uh, little LED light strips that if you want it in there, stuff like that. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and turn each one on right now. So what I went and turned on are the light strips. I have them on both sides of the uh, bookshelf. And now I'm going to turn on some of the lights inside of my bookshelf. So you can see already it's starting to add a little dimension using color. So I separated myself with the hair light, as you can see right up here. And then I also have my key light. So that's three lights so far. Let's add another one. The next light I use is a three inch light tube from Ulanzi that is USB-C charged. It's an RGB light, has a lot of great effects, but I like because I get to tuck it away in the bookshelf. So that's what I have right there, but it, it, it keeps it from looking like a little cave down there. Since I know it's in frame, that little area, I want to give it a little bit of light instead of just having tons of darkness there. Now let's add some more lights. Okay, so now I just added some of my little Christmas tree lighting that I like to use. Again, it adds some depth, a little bit of dimension, and it kind of breaks things up. I like it. Um, you don't have to use that, but it's something I like to add. But that that that's just something that I think adds a little sweet touch to the background. Again, that is optional, as well as these light strips that I have here that are color. But I tend to like it using at least two forms of color. So I have the a little bit of warmer tone, which is probably more like, you know, um, 27 uh, 2700 Kelvin, and then I add, break it up using a color wheel so that yellowish and the blue of the lights tend to work really well together. So now let's add some more lighting. As you can see right here, with the additional lighting in the bookshelf as well as the rear light, now I really created a lot of dimension. You have colors going on. You have uh, definitely shapes and patterns because of the little uh, Christmas lights right here. And these Christmas lights were from the dollar store, so it's very cheap. The Yulanzi little light tube right here is only about $30, very cheap. The most expensive lighting that I have is the Loom Cube two-panel light kit, but that's something I could take with me, use it on jobs for our documentary or test uh, company corporate tutorials interviews etc so that was a very good investment everything else in here is very very cheap uh the light back there is just from uh ikea so it's just a regular lamp and i just placed it so that it highlights my photo up there that i have framed up now you could do the same thing just be creative utilize the lights in your frame the practical lighting as you can see i added some hair light but if you can't do hair light you could definitely add perhaps maybe some fill or some edge lighting so you could definitely do that because again the two panel kit comes with 270 inch light stand so you're already ready to go now when we talk about uh, settings, as I mentioned earlier, one thing you do want to do is utilize something like this. It's a white balance card. It, it is the color checker. It's the x right color checker. Now, this thing is clutch. Now, when I, uh, whenever I have, I have a preset or a custom setting in my camera, and then I use the white balance card here to get the accurate white balance. So therefore my skin tone and as well as the colors on the back is accurate as possible. So I would highly recommend one of these if you're a photographer and especially if you're a videographer, this is a must. As you can see, all I really needed was two 
main lights, which was the hair light as well as the key light. Everything else was just practical lighting that got that I got creative with. Your lighting setup doesn't need to be as complicated, but for your YouTube videos to look really nice, it requires good lighting. One way to really improve the look of your YouTube video is to make sure that you're not pressed up against the wall. Get yourself away from the wall, at least two feet is what I recommend. Open up your aperture to like 1.8, 2.0 in my case, and then you can dramatically see the difference in your video. Your viewers will automatically notice how much more professional you look just because of that nice uh, blurry background. And it's not a digital blur, it's an actual optical blur. So it's a much more pleasing and realistic feel. Now, so good lighting, creative placement of your lights, getting away from the wall is going to dramatically improve your YouTube video. I may not have a million subscribers, but one thing people do say is, wow, your videos look professional. And guess what? It doesn't cost me a lot of money to do it. It's just the fact that I take my time, look at the frame, and then realize where in the frame can I place more lights and what matters, right? Take away the distractions in the back, etc., and add things that matter. So with all that said, get creative. I'm going to leave a link in the description section for you to check out all the lights that I use in this video. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please post them down below. I hope this helps you out in any way to better improve the quality of your YouTube videos. And if you enjoyed the video and you would like to see more, don't forget to press that like, that share, that subscribe, and you already know, hit that bell icon to get notifications for my upcoming content. I'm Robert Silver, and until next time, keep shooting and stay creative.